So, today I will talk to you about minimum auto completion. And for anybody who's not familiar with auto completion, it's the tendency for editors to provide you with ways to like automatically fill out your code. In some particular cases, like this is the Cloud9 text editor, they actually also showcase that they sometimes include documentation for how to use it or just the inline documentation for that particular method. Um, and so the reason you might want to have auto completion is because, of course, not everybody is a touch typist that's going at 100 words per minute. Uh, and they don't necessarily want to uh, have to sit there and type out long commands, particularly if you're using something like uh, Active Record. Uh, and maybe this is improved, I haven't used it in a long time, but it used to be something like you know, you'd have find or replace by ID or something like that as a method name. And that's a really lot to type, um, even if you are a fast typist. Plus, also, if you have really long method names or just complicated method names or something like that, you know, you might wind up with a bunch of typos if you're just typing it out over and over again. Especially if, like me, you know, I, I type, I have a lot of typos. Now, I feel like I type pretty quickly, but with that, I also make a lot of mistakes. You know, so if the computer's typing, it's less likely to make a mistake. But the biggest thing is probably that, you know, um, the, with larger and larger projects, of course, you have to remember more and more of what's going on at all times, unless, of course, you can lean back on the computer and have the computer do what the computer does well, which is store and retrieve just large amounts of text or other information. But also there's, you know, it's, it's kind of cool to you know, just have, have nice little toys like that. So auto-completion, works in insert mode. It does this because, of course, the easiest way for auto-completion to generally work is that you're typing, and you're like, oh, I need to call this method. I don't remember the name. You just hit a quick command, and then you, it gets pulled up. You know? So you don't necessarily want to go back out into normal mode. You don't want to uh, have to look it up in the command mode or anything like that. Um, so the way it works in Vim, a lot of editors usually use tab to do this, but by default, you know, in Vim, if you type tab, you get tab unless you have soft tab stop turned on, or expand tab or something like that, but, you know, when you type tab, you get some characters in insert mode. So what Vim does instead is it actually has this control X um, subcommand, sub mode, basically. So uh, you're, when you're inside insert mode, you press control X, you go into uh, control X mode, which is a completely different kind of mode, and then you would type out Command. And the reason you would type a command after that instead of immediately getting that pop-up is because there's actually different kinds of completion that Vim understands. As a matter of fact, there are 13 different types, which I will quickly go over, but you know, not necessarily expecting you to remember. Um, it actually has a line completion mode where if you start typing a few characters and hit Control X and then Control L, it will actually look for lines that match that in your file. So it will look for an entire line that is exactly that starts with that, and if you select that line, it will insert that, that entire line. Um, there are keyword that it's uh, it'll there's a mode to look for keywords in the file. That's basically any word inside of the file. So you hit Control X, Control N, or Control X, Control P, and it will either look forward or backwards, but it will wrap around the file. It it'll look for words that uh, match that uh, initial string. This one's kind of weird. Uh, Vim actually has the capacity to load a custom dictionary file. Um, I don't know how many people actually use this, but basically, if you have one of those dictionary files loaded, you can start typing uh, some characters, hit Control X, Control K, and it will look up some entries from that dictionary file for you. And similarly, and probably even more rarely used, is it actually has the capacity to load a thesaurus file. And so you can type a word, Control X, Control T will then give you synonyms that you can cycle through. Um, I really don't know how many people use a thesaurus <laughs> file. Um, the, uh, and then earlier I had the file keywords that was just the immediate file that you were currently editing. The uh, Control I will actually look for keywords that are in files that you've included. 
uh, Vim actually has for various languages. It understands how they load other documents. So for instance, in PHP, it understands that it needs to look for either require, require once, include, include once. I believe in Perl, it would probably look for use statements or require statements, uh, that sort of thing. So it'll actually look, load those files, and then search through them as well if you use this control, X control I. Tags is actually a whole different topic in and of itself, I would say, but this is, a, in short, it's a way for a program called ctags to go through and build sort of a quick lookup library for a project. So it can look through everything in a directory and build sort of an index file for you so that you can instantly jump to the definition of some method, even though it's not a file that you've loaded at all. It's just something that it's indexed for you. It can also do file names. So if you start typing the first few characters of a file name, um, it can auto-complete that, which is perhaps handy for people who maybe do uh, migrations for like for databases and stuff. When you have, you know, it starts in a very consistent pattern. You hit Control F after you type the first few characters that you know are unique, and it automatically fills out the rest of it for you. Um, this I probably kind of like the, well, not quite as bad as the dictionary words as the source words, but this seems like very C and C++ kind of thing, the definitions and macros. Uh, VI wears its whole uh, C and C++ roots proudly. Um, this is for people who are writing Vim scripts, uh, which may not be very many people at all, unless, I mean, perhaps if you're writing a, an advanced VimRC file or something, or you're writing a plugin, you might use that, but otherwise probably not. You can define your own lookup functions in Vim scripts, though. If you are writing a Vim plugin, you can actually, and a lot of them do this, they actually set up a custom function that can return results. So, you know, it can it takes a the string you started to write and then returns a list of results. So you can have your own custom lookups. And then um, Omni-completion is probably the one I would use the, the most after the uh, uh, tags or the keywords one. Um, and that's basically, Vim takes the syntax definitions that it already has loaded so it can do the syntax highlighting. So it, like it has to be aware of language features. And it takes that and it'll, it'll look up um, feature, uh, keywords from that particular language that you're editing. So for PHP, this is particularly useful because, of course, PHP has that huge standard library that's all in the like main namespace. So you've got like hundreds, perhaps thousands of functions that come by default. You know, omni-completion, you type a few characters, you can't remember, you know, is it a race or a array case or whatever, whatever function it is, you can look up what the, uh, you can use omni-completion for that. And, um, if you've got spell checking turned on, because Vim will do that, that's different than the uh, dictionary words, by the way. There's, there's, there's a whole different spell checking mechanism. And if you've got spell checking turned on and it highlights that you've misspelled a word, you can actually get spelling suggestions, uh, which is sometimes handy. I find it's useful. For instance, I have spell checking turned on when I write git commit messages or documentation or something like that. Uh, you know, and occasionally I have words that I just don't spell very well fairly consistently, like parallel. For some reason, I can never remember which, how many L's go where. You know, this is kind of handy for that. So let's just look a little bit at how this will work. So here I've got basically just a function. Just It's actually kind of a bad function because it actually returns some information at the same time it has a side effect, but we'll ignore that. It's a function, you know, it's got some, it's got an argument, you know, it's pretty well defined. You know, it's just standard function. So let's just say we go and uh, add some stuff to it. But let's pretend we're later on in the file, right? We're actually, we don't have the function definition handy. So we start writing some code, and we can't remember if we called it greet or greeting or how, how, how it was called. But we do remember it started with a gr, right? And it kind of got cut off at the bottom here, but you see underneath my status bar, which is a custom thing, but 
by default, it will show you this control X mode. And those are all of the various subcommands that you can run. Now, uh, so that's actually like the bracket and the uh, um, control D, control E, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so it will actually show you all the various subcommands that you can run. And in this particular case, I believe I'm going to use the uh, Omni completion here. So I've actually brought it up, and then I can just use the arrow keys to navigate this list. And you'll see that actually it brought up this preview window, which shows not only the name of the function, but it also shows the argument that it can take. Now, this is Omni completion, which means usually it's just the core library, but because this is actually the current, this is a definition in the currently loaded file, I can sort of get away with this. Um, normally, I'd probably have to use uh, tag search, but I didn't build a tags file for this or anything, so um, so I'm just using the Omni completion here. So we find the thing we want, we scroll up or down to it, we hit enter, and it puts it in for us, and then we can just continue writing. So at that point, um, let's see. Yeah. Well, you can't read what I just wrote there. But it's a P close, because you saw that preview window persisted after I was done there. And it actually can be kind of annoying for people. I mean, it's, it's hit or miss whether or not you care that it's there. But if you do care that it's there, if you need that screen real estate back, you run that P close command, and that will close the preview window. <clears throat> and then, of course, we can write out the file and run PHP real quick just to see, or run the PHP on this file just to see if it works, and it turns out it didn't. Because, as it turns out, I actually read the definition a little too closely, and just copied and pasted what I saw, and or, uh, put a variable in there that I didn't actually have. So I actually need to give it about. And then, at this point, I'm sitting there saying, well, I don't remember my own name. Like, do, is it a Stephen with a PH or a V or whatever? And say somebody else is writing this, say I'm just having a real big brain fart and I just don't remember. You know, how would I, uh, how would I know without necessarily going and scrolling through the file and figuring it out? Well, I can actually use the keyword search because again, I actually wrote it in the documentation for this method. My name is an example, so I know it's in there. I know it's in the file somewhere. So I'll do control X and then I'll do control N to search for words that begin with this STE. And actually here, it was the only word in the entire file that began with STE. So instead of giving me a list, the com completion actually just filled it out for me. said, that's the only match. So it just returned me back to normal mode. So then I can write the file and try it out again and see that, yes, in fact, I called this method correctly. <laughs> so then we'll just go through and perhaps we want to, for instance, um, uh, print out some information about the file. This is just sort of going over again, just to sort of hammer it home. Uh, we would use the um, Omni completion here to look through, and this is the whole uh, standard library of every function that begins with print in PHP. As I was saying, there's so many, <laughs> you know. So if I actually wanted one of these others, you know, I would actually be able to look them up. And of course, also see what PHP expects for any one of these uh, any one of these functions. So I find the find the definition I want, which is just to print out the thing. And here you might here's where it gets kind of crazy. Um, I've been doing all this, you know, control X, control whatever. There's actually a way to shortcut the keyword search, and then the keyword search actually allows you to and this shortcut actually allows you to fold in the tag completion search as well as the uh, control N. You can actually just jump straight to the control N just by sitting, simply saying control N, like we do here. And this will actually look through the entire the, the, the entire file and through tags and through included files and any other open files we happen to have at the time. And you saw, I might have gone by too quickly, but you saw that I started with GREE and it actually looked up both greet, which was the function, and greeting, which was the variable, which is both things that it saw. And so, yeah, we can close that window real quick with the P close command. It was annoying. Oops. And, I, well, it ran the command. That's how I worked on it. 
<laughs> that's, a, that's why I just bypassed. Um, so as I was saying, the most useful commands in my mind are the uh, control X, control O, which is Omni completion. And this actually does require some BIMRC configuration. Um, I find it's easiest just to actually, if you don't save your BIMRC files anywhere, like some people take their BIMRC files and put them in GitHub or whatever so that they can just easily reference them and copy them from computer to computer. Uh, if you don't do that, I generally just look this up because there's no way I'm going to remember all of that just because you put it in your MRC file and you forget it. Uh, but this basically, uh, you have to specify the function for Omni completion to use, and it's just that there's a built in function to do, to do that. Um, and then, as I, as I mentioned, the control N uh, shortcut, instead of just control X, control N, if you just do control N, that actually gives you a broad set of. Uh, potential completions, which are perhaps more useful than any single other um, set. And then the p close command, which will you know, uh, close that preview window and get you back the, the screen real estate that is otherwise used with it. Um, sometimes uh, you can actually, uh, I'm not going to mention that plugin in a second here, has the option to automatically close that window as soon as you select what you were working on, but some people might want to leave it open for a little while just because, as you saw, it has sometimes the definitions for the functions that you're calling. And so if it closes automatically, then it's like, well, what, how, how is this function defined? And it's kind of, that could be frustrating. Um, as I mentioned, I was about to go over this. There's a there's a plugin, there are actually several plugins for auto completion because some people are used to using tab to do auto completion. But there's all sorts of uh, setup you have to do to make it work that way and also be intelligent about it. Because like if you're at the beginning of the line, you hit tab, you don't necessarily want, you know, <coughs> auto completion to start because it's gonna look give you a list of hundreds of items that you didn't want. You want it to indent your code. <laughs> yeah. Um, so super tab is a, a whole plugin that actually puts a special mapping in place for tab that intelligently determines whether or not to start auto completion or just insert you know some spaces for you um, it also has this neat little feature where it can actually chain together different auto completion types so if for instance uh, like you, you select a default type of auto completion to run um, when you hit tab, if you um, you can actually have it where it will um, try one of them, and if it doesn't work, it'll try the next uh, auto completion type, which is kind of cool. Um, but the biggest resource is, of course, the, the help files. If um, if you're not into if, if you're not into googling uh, <laughs> solutions, you can use the the help command. This is. This will have a lot of in-depth information on the different ways you can use the insert completion that actually goes uh, over each and every one of those uh, methods. And hopefully, it's, it's actually something that kind of I had to pour over a lot while doing this presentation, uh, just because you know it's a lot to take in at once, but hopefully uh, it's a little bit more clear at this point. So, yes, any questions? Those examples were using GVIM or BIM? Uh, just BIM. I don't, I don't tend to use GVIM really. Um, I'm very much a command line person. Uh, I don't have anything against it really. It's just that a lot of work I do tends to wind up being on a server somewhere. Um, so it's just a lot easier to just stay in the... So, so those drop downs that were showing up would show up in a terminal with BIM? Yeah. So they 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 yeah, a scroll bar too. Um, I don't know. If there there's there's definitely mouse integration. I don't know if the mouse integration is intelligent enough to to do the to do like a scroll bar on that or anything. I feel like I don't think so. No, it's it's a cursor through, right? Yeah, it's yeah. just a keys, you know, up and down. Well, no, I'm, I mean like. Uh, I mean, 
and scrolling on the suggestions, right? Uh, yeah. yeah I, I mean, I'm using one one VMRC file and there is no scrolling effect. You know, you cannot scroll through your mouse on that suggestion. It's just keep up and down. And up. I mean, do you have the mouse mode enabled? So it shows a scroll bar, but you can't. Uh, yeah, you would just have to use the arrow keys. Oh, okay. which well, you didn't actually try to touch the scroll bar. You tried to touch the word, right? No, I, I tried to try to click on the scroll oh, bar. Right. Yeah. And scrolling with the mouse doesn't seem to work. So you can see. Generally speaking, like um, when you move, when you type something into the editor, does it um, like redraw the whole screen or? Um? Um, I honestly am not sure. I, I haven't had to deal too much with how like uh, drawing across the screen works in these particular situations. So I don't. I wouldn't think it's redrawing the entire screen. I think it can. I think programs can theoretically target areas um, and just redraw what's necessary. But I'm not sure offhand. As I, <laughs> I'm not that I'm not that good with Vim to know the that specific. Uh, so, any questions? So I think actually we have probably oh, over time. Time. Um you said to enter that mode, you press Control X. What gets you out of that mode? Or um, <laughs> actually, uh, if you haven't done anything yet, then I think Escape will work. But if you've, for instance, done something like this, um, if you hit Escape, I think, yeah. Depending on what is, um, uh, depending on what's happened, um, you might not be able to hit escape and have it go back to what it was doing before. Um, so let's see. So yeah, if I if I hit escape now, PHP is going to still be there, even though the um, even though I've um, not selected anything. If I hit escape, PHP will stay there. So if I wanted to escape and go back, it would actually be Control E, which is kind of you can try. But I guess that's like escape, <laughs> E for escape, I guess. Uh, but that's the only way we get out of it without <coughs> changing the text unintentionally. So, um, but yes, I think at this point we have run over our time, so I should pack up. Um, it's also quite 